Hey Molt fans, so today I thought I'd do this little video on how to edit your config settings in the any files on, of your ARC main files. Because I've been talking to some of the people that I know that play this game and I've had to, I've helped them a few times in uh, knowing how to do that and learning how to do that and where to go and what things to put in. And so I thought I'd do a little guide on how to do that. So first of all, if you're going to want, well one, your settings that you're going to want to put in. So I've made this little, this little, I guess, word, Google Doc, there we go, that has some uh, common ones, and I'll be going through each of these and explaining what they do in a little bit. But I'm going to provide a link for this in the, uh, in the description. And you can also, I've provided the link right here that'll bring you to this page, which gives you like, all of the different options on the wiki. So, and it also does provide instructions if you uh, need a refresher. So first of all, you need to find your any file. So for most of you guys, you go to this PC or my PC if you're Windows 7, you go to your local disk, program files 86, you go down to Steam, and then Steam apps, common, and then games, as I have in this little folder, all your games will be installed here. Mine is a little bit different. I have a different install path because I have a hard drive specifically for my video games. So you go into comp, so as you can see here, it's a little different. So Steam Apps Common, then you'll have your all your games. You go into Arc, Shooter Game, go into uh, Saved. Note, not config yet. Go into Saved and then config. Then Windows No Editor. And then they'll be in here. Uh, so there's your game any, and then your, uh, where'd it go? Game user settings any. So uh, with the amount of times that Arc has been resetting all the settings, this is something I recommend. I've actually just gone into the game any, and once I've done all my adjustments, you can see here's some of mine, I've overridden all the engram points, that um, you can just hit control A, copy them, and then I've just made a little dock so that for my game any, I can just copy all of this back into my game any, and then same, I have further down my game user settings. Then I can copy that into my game user settings, and then it'll automatically put like adjust all the settings and everything that you can normally adjust in uh, your host slash local. It'll automatically do all of that, so you don't have to constantly, each time Arc seems to patch recently, redo it all. So that is how you do that. So as you can see here, you've got your game any, and you've got your game user settings. So a lot of these, I'm only going to cover things that you can't, a lot of these you can uh, toggle within the arc, like the arc settings. If they, like with single player, I mean, in the host slash local, you have all the settings on the left, and then the middle is where you start, and then the mods on the right. You can. Uh, I'm only going to be covering things that you can't normally, uh, I guess, toggle or adjust in that normal settings. So... So, you can, so all that you do with these options is like either here on this this server configurations page, you can uh, it gives you the things. This is for in the launch options. Actually, you scroll a bit further down and go to configuration files, and then it explains what. So the it all it has a nice handy little list. It says game user settings any. So all these will go into your game user settings any. So I can open, uh, this is my user settings. You can just open it, scroll to the bottom, and uh, paste. And if you have mod configurations, it'll also be in that right here. So uh, as you can see here, I have a bunch of S plus ones. I'll, I'll do a separate video at some point on all the different structures plus, or I guess maybe super structures uh, configurations. Okay, so let's get started. So one of the most common adjustments people make is the difficulty setting. So you can come to this left column, copy whatever is here. You can, this middle column explains like what points are, and then the right for explains it further. So on this, and it's, I just directly copied and pasted it from this wiki page. So you can go, you can go through here for all the different settings, but these are some of the more common ones for just convenience for you guys. So all of these, you're just gonna go to the appropriate file. In this case, the game any, you copy this setting, and then you go to your game any file, and then you can just go scroll to the bottom. So you can see I opened mine. I have a bunch of other stuff in here. I have Engram auto unlock. So as you can see here, I've just pasted it right here. So right before on my Engram entry auto unlock. So most of you guys will have all of that unless you 
want to do that. And I'll provide a link for all this below. What I've done is I have made it so that each DLC item will automatically unlock at the appropriate level so that I don't need to go to the different maps to unlock them all. Because that gets really annoying once you've done it a few times. <laughs> but yeah, so that's that. I'm playing single player, so that's why I do that. So yeah, you can just play, paste it at the bottom. I also, as you can see, have Ansel, and then I have the hair growth speed multiplier. So as you can see here, this is where you do that. So this is right here, override player level Ingram points. As you can see, I have a bunch of those at the top. Ooh, that's the game user settings, wrong ones. At the top of the game settings. So this is for level zero, you get zero. For level one, you get 48. For level two, you get, I, I have adjusted it to eight. So this is where you adjust the amount of Ingram points you get per level. So I've made this so high because I have a mod install that uh, lets you unlock the, the upgrade station. I have that there so that it's it's so high because so I can unlock all the upgrade station Ingrams and then I just have the normal amount. So this is where you can adjust that and you need to include one for each level. And uh, this, I only go up to 135. I need to adjust it to go to the new max level, which is 155, I believe. Yeah, 155. So I need to adjust the Engram points further. But this is how you adjust, as, adjust your Engram points. And as it explains here, it explains all of it here. So that is how you adjust the Engram points. Is you just keep going to the wrong settings. Let's just close that for now. So I stopped going to the wrong one. So yeah, that is how you override the Engram points. And this works in server the server settings. It's a little bit different how you install. This is all for single player. So this is how you do it in single players. You go to your game any, and then you can override player Engram points. So you need to include one for level zero, but then it's just level one, level two, level three, level four. And that's, you copy and can adjust the Engram points for each level. And it does, I think, adjust retroactively. So. There is that. I need to go through and adjust that on mine actually some more. So the next, another option you can do is the hair growth speed multiplier, which in single player is kind of nice to have adjusted because normally the servers are running 24-7 and for uh, recipes that in that require hair, which like in the S plus you have the animal tender or the, I don't remember all of them, but the nanny or the farmer, some of them require human hair. It can take forever <laughs> to get the amount that you need. So I have upped mine to 10. So you just replace the value with whatever multiplier you want. So, all right, in here, I have the setting right here. I've done it so it, it grows 10 times faster, and that's been perfectly fine for me. So with these, I have learned that you can... I didn't even know a couple of these options that even existed. Apparently you can adjust the tamed dino character food drain versus the wild dino character food drain. And I believe that the the option in the uh, our normal host local arc settings adjusts both simultaneously. So you can adjust it so that tamed dino your, your tamed dinos don't drain food as fast as say wild wild dinos. So this would essentially make your creatures tame faster because the food drains faster so they eat faster. So that's super useful. So you would just with these that don't have automatically so you would just copy this you would uh, go to your uh, settings, so let's make a new one, do that, and then you just put equals and then the, the, the value, I suppose. So it would be equals, this is the multiplier, so let's see, we want it, your tame dinos to just be normal, so that would be one. But then if you want the wild, your, the wild dinos to tame faster, you can go and copy that, paste, equals, say, we want it to drain three times faster. So now, the wild dinos will drain food three times faster than tame dinos. So I didn't even know that option existed. I might actually keep that. So you can also do that with wild dinos draining torpor. You can adjust it. If you make it less than one, you can make it slower, which is super nice. This is the famous destroy tames over level 450 uh, option, which is on, like it says, explains right here, on official servers, it's set to 449. I didn't even know this was a thing that you could adjust, but that's nice to know. So this is what you use to adjust that. If you, like it says, default is zero, so like it does 
if you just leave this out, it, it, well, you won't ever have to worry about it in single player. You can get them to way over 450. You can be however high you want, but as it says here, official servers have it set to 449. You can have it set higher, have it set lower according to your server or in single player. So yeah, that's that. Another option I didn't realize existed was this max fall speed multiplier. So as it explains here, essentially you can either increase or reduce the amount of fall damage you take. So like say having it set to 0 0.1, so you just copy this in place to equals 0 0.1 means you can't even survive a regular jump, while having it set to like 100 means you'll practically never take fall damage. So this is, depending on if you want that or not, I just thought it was cool. I didn't this isn't something you can normally adjust in the normal settings, so I thought I'd include that here. And it's I, I won't personally use it, but it's a pretty cool option to know that you have available. So these last three are for Genesis specifically. So as it explains here, this is what you do to enable building in mission zones. So this is what you would do on single player. You would grab this, you go to your game settings, so you can see here, let's make a new entry. So that equals true. So now we can build in mission zones. So this, this will disable building in mission areas if set to true. This enables building in mission areas. So they're, it's, they're very similar. They're practically the same command, just it toggles a little bit differently. This just flat out disables all Genesis missions. I don't know why you would do that, but hey, more power to you if you do want to. Go go ahead. <laughs> so yeah, I'm going to, I guess, save these options for now. Now let's go to the game user settings. You can open that. Normally it's at the bottom where you want to put it, but if you have mods installed, it'll be a little bit different. So what you want to do, so from the top, just scroll down until you find this server settings. So this is where you want to copy and paste all of these into. So I'm just going to go to the bottom of this section so I can find it easier. So, all right. So didn't know this was an option either. You can change how fast your dinos passively regen health over time. So uh, say you put this and then equals three. Instead of the default, it'll, the default regen, it'll, they'll heal three times faster. So that's cool. This is where you can disable weather. So you just would copy this, paste, equals true. The beautiful, beautiful option that doesn't work on all maps for some reason, but it works on some of them. <laughs> This is another one that I didn't realize even existed. You can uh, multiply the amount of the, amount, the stack sizes. So uh, it, without ultra stacks, which I tend to use because ultra stacks is great and I'm single player. So anyway, if you want to adjust it a little bit, you can say, I believe, I'm trying to remember, I haven't played with normal for a while. Say like the bullets normally stack to 100 now. You could go item stack size multiplier equals, ooh, equals three. And so uh, according to this, I haven't actually tested it, but according to this, then it, you will be able to stack bullets to 300 instead of the default 100. So that's really nice. This or these are the, why do I keep accidentally clicking on things? I just want to highlight. <laughs> these are for the generally Genesis specific can be, but can be used in other things as well. So these are more, these are a lot more recent additions. So you can force ride flyers. So this will allow you to ride flyers on Genesis if you put it into your into your server settings. But if you set it to false, as it says here, it will disable flyers on every map, which could actually be interesting, you know, if you want to have a cool role-playing map or something. So it's a useful option to know that you have. This is what allows you to use the tech suit powers in uh, Genesis. So you could just copy this, go to your server settings, paste equals true. Now you can use the te tech suit, that's all it takes. I'm not going to keep that because I, I like playing Genesis as, the, 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 as wildcard intended, but that's how you do that. So this is the uh, new cryo sickness uh, adjustments that you can make for ARC. But once again, these are only applicable for PVE, as an elephant, not PVP. 
So you can enable or disable cryo sickness on tamed creatures. So I normally play it's PvPVE. Wow, all the all the letters. So I could put this in here equals true, but unless I have that PVE check mark checked in the host slash local or the settings in uh, your settings, it's not going to do anything because it only works on PVE as it says here. So I love that they've added this option. It's really great. So this is how you are able to adjust the cryopod settings. So this, there's more settings to it, however, than just completely disabling it. You can create a nerf with, as it says here, custom settings for amount of time and percentage of damage after deploy. So this will, you have to have it to true to enable these next two settings. So you would copy this equals true, and then you can adjust the settings with these. So then you would copy this. So this is the amount of time the damage reduction of a tame will last after being deployed from a cryopod. So I don't exactly understand exactly what 10 means, but so say, I don't know if it's exactly seconds, don't quote me on that, but just for example's sake, this means that for 10 seconds afterwards, you'll get a damage reduction on that tame after it's deployed from the cryopod. This is a damage multiplier. So this is the percentage of damage the tame can deal after being deployed from a cryopod. So this, like these are the cryopod nerfs. So that's, if you want to include that, oh, it actually explains this one. It's a valid value. Okay, so uh, 0 0.01 means 99% of the damage is removed from a cryopodded, recently cryopodded creatures. So good to know. And then finally, you can increase the damage that hits the your creatures. So essentially, <laughs> to sum it up, this cryopod nerf duration will affect the damage that, that your cryopodded creature takes. So say I just threw out a Rex. With this, you can adjust how much damage that Rex takes from the from other sources. So you can make it so it takes less damage. This option affects the amount of damage that your Rex would deal to other creatures. So this would make it so, say you put zero, so cryopod nerf damage molt equals 0 0.5. So it would only deal 50% of normal damage during that nerf time. And then this last one, so you throw out that Rex, this would uh, increase the amount of damage that that Rex takes. So uh, say you're in a PvP situation and you throw out your Rex and you're getting attacked, it'll take, so say you put, as the example here, 0 0.25, that means it'll take 25 more damage while the debuff lasts. So. That are the that is the cryopod nerf settings that you can adjust. So I think that covers everything I have in this little file. Yep, that's all of them. If you want more server configuration settings, as I explained earlier, you can go to this link. I've included the link right here in my little doc that I'll include in the description down below. You can scroll down to the configuration files and it gives a brief explanation on all of these and then gives you all of the different options. So that is how you do that. If you want to find some more about these or some of the common ones that I think would are probably the most used and most searched for. So thank you so much for watching guys. If you enjoyed this, please hit the like button, subscribe, comment below and hit that notification bell to see more of the videos that I upload and I will see you guys in the next one. I hope this is helpful. Bye.